I found this interesting. It's from, uh, I think, from the uh, Associated Press, maybe, uh, this headline. Trump wanted courthouse protests, but instead got the MAGA misfits. <laughs> MAGA misfits. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Yeah, I watched some of the uh, uh, interviews conducted by uh, MSNBC uh, reporters with some of these MAGA assholes who had uh, <clears throat> clustered around the Miami courthouse to show support for their dear leader. And some of these interviews were just astonishing in their stupidity, just total brain-dead stupidity. My God. Ah, uh, but there they were, flying the Trump colors and showing prosecutors that the prosecutors are up against a MAGA army. If that's the army <clears throat> that uh, Jack Smith is up against, I don't think he has any worries whatsoever. Um, now, the pro- protesters that showed up didn't show any unity or organization. It wasn't like the attack on the Capitol, attempt to overthrow the government. What they did show, these screwballs yesterday, was a just an incredibly stupid display of MAGA spectacles. One of them had a pig's head on a pike. What the hell was that about? Trump's head, maybe? Okay. Uh, Oh, and they got the uh, street shut down over an abandoned television. Did you hear about that one? Um, There was a suspicious package near the courthouse. So the street was cordoned off, and the uh, gendarme stepped in and said, okay, everybody clear out of here. And when they examined the package, it was an old... useless (laughs) useless <laughs> television set go figure oh well anyway as we all know the orange rat was uh, busted on 37 felony counts related to his theft of classified documents and what he had planned uh i'm sure of it i know i'm not inside trump's head i wouldn't go there if there was a huge doorway that said come on in malloy uh uh-uh, uh no way but knowing trump's activities and his actions uh, over the course of his useless life trump gathered those documents to sell that's it. that's the only that's the only reason or to barter that's the only reason he would have had them he didn't give a shit about somebody else's nuclear plans somebody else's plans to invade another country or even plans about our plans <laughs> plans about our trump doesn't give a shit um, the only thing Trump is interested in is convincing the brain dead maggots that he is their leader and give me your money. That's it. That's the extent of Trump's useless life. So um, on social media, after he was arraigned or before social media, before he was arraigned on his little toy social media platform, he called on his fans to come to Miami for the court appearance. He wrote um, uh, the first of the week in all caps, see you in Miami on Tuesday. <laughs> well, um, yeah, uh, maybe 100 people showed up, most of them looking like complete dorks. And like I mentioned yesterday, why do Trump supporting women in so many instances wear camo? I, well, whatever. Whatever. Um, in a video outside the courthouse on Tuesday, in a reference to Trump's rival and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, one of these jerkwads said, What I like about this, we've been supporting Trump since day one and never switch up on Donald Trump. Man, what's up? The sand heads. The sand heads need to get out here and get with Trump. <laughs> End quote. Ah, the sand heads. Is that the new one? The sand heads. You're a maggot or a the sand head. Wow. Where are we? We're stuck in some goddamn third grade alternative universe where people show up with pig's heads and talk about DeSant head. Or maybe that was the guy that had DeSant, uh, had the pig head on his stick. Who knows? Anyway, um, the attendance at, uh, at the courthouse was, uh, was purely political. N- nobody was there to defend the son of a bitch. Uh, even the people who support him, not a word is said about his innocence. Never. Uh, yeah. 
Um, the uh, uh, rapper Blow was there, and he recent uh, he frequently, I should say, releases songs timed to conservative news items, and he was there promoting a new song called Trump Indictment. <laughs> And on Monday, Blow tweeted a picture of himself wearing a signboard with a QR code on it. If you want to download the tune. Ah! And Mr. Blow tweeted, quote, See everyone tomorrow help us get Trump indictment to number one on iTunes. (laughs) Yeah, well, all right. He was promoting both the, uh, the the track, his music, and the protest against Trump's second felony arraignment this year. Blow, I, I never heard of you, but, you know, whatever you do, man, take a break. I mean, go sit down, go rap. You know, are you serious? Are you serious, Blow? Ow! I guess he is. Um, now, there were some other eccentric characters that showed up for this uh, circle jerk at the Miami courthouse. Here's one. Osmini Estrada, as reported here by, uh, I don't know where I'm getting this, maybe Associated Press. But this guy, 40 years old, he was wearing an American flag and a Cuban flag as he paraded around the courthouse. Oh, he's the one with the pig's head on the spike. Okay. And he posed for photos with anyone who asked. But mostly he, you know, was dodging away from the TV crews who, who, who wanted to take his picture. Um, Mr. Estrada said he was confident that his Lord and Savior, Savior Donald Trump, would quickly be found not guilty. And he, uh, Mr. Estrada, the pig head carrying jerk off, said he became even more certain of a Trump victory when the crazy bitch Judge Eileen Cannon was selected to preside over the case when it goes to trial. Uh, and Estrada, referring to uh, Miss Cannon's Cuban heritage, there's something for you to chew on. Estrada said, quote, she's one of us. We already know what's going to happen. This corruption won't stand. Everyone here knows that. That's why you see so many smiles. We're all just enjoying this beautiful moment before we win again. <laughs> before you win what, you jerkwad? <laughs> before, ow! The MAGA people are so... I, I I don't know. Uh, the term delusional doesn't quite make it. Uh, do, make it. <laughs> oh, before we win again. Now, uh, Mr. Estrada says he came to Miami on a raft from Cuba in 1992. And according to what I have here, he was one of the first protesters to arrive Tuesday morning. He, and he stuck around as a crowd of Trump supporters grew into at least 100 by 1 p.m. Um, and until noon, the protesters were outnumbered by journalists and dozens of cops who carried assault rifles <laughs> as they circled the area. Only in America, well, not only in America, but only in America now that Trump has been sluicing his way through this culture, this country, this society with his with his filthy trail of of slime behind him. Oh, and when he was asked um, about the pig's head, Estrada said he didn't have a good reason for carrying around a pig's head on a pike, but he confirmed that the dead animal was real. See, this is the kind of stuff that Republican candidates or Christian fascist candidates, whatever you want to call them, for the presidency in the primary... This is what they have to turn their eyes away from and pretend like it never happened. A pig's head on a pike. Mm. Uh, Mr. Estrada did say when he was questioned about it, he just said, sometimes you just have to be bold. (laughs) Okay. Okay. All right, Estrada. You are one bold hombre. Yes, you are. And then this guy, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, who is another 
Christian fascists, even with the name of Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, you know, you would think he might be Hindu, maybe, uh, or Muslim or something. No, 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 no. Um, he wants to be president, too. We will never have a president named Ramaswamy. I'm sorry. That's just not going to happen. And, and Vivek knows that. Everybody knows that. But, you know, it's, it's fun. It's a sport. It's a game. Um, he gave a Tuesday morning speech. He did. In which he pledged that if he's elected president, he will pardon Trump. <laughs> All right, Vivek, you, you go. You go there, dude. And then there's another one, a, a guy named uh, Tim Giannette, uh a Christian fascist nutcase who goes by the name Baked Alaska. I guess he has a streaming show or something. But he was live streaming himself outside the courthouse. Uh, on t- and, oh, by the way, Tim was recently released from prison. <laughs> where he was serving a very minimal amount of time, 60 days for his participation in the January 6th Capitol attack. And, oh, by the way, he was also found guilty last year of defacing a Hanukkah display. Oh, nice, Jeanette, you little prick. And in a live stream of the vandalism, as he was doing it, this dumb fuck said, quote, No more Happy Hanukkah, only Merry Christmas. This is a disgrace. End quote. Tim Giannette, a sick fuck by any definition. And then at least one member, and, and you know, some of these Proud Boys, some of these terrorist groups, they, they're so fucked up in the head. I don't know what it's from, too much booze, too much methamphetamine but one of these jerk offs the proud boys showed up um a telegram channel for the group called villain city proud boys uh, uploaded a video from the grounds although the group did not appear to have a uniform presence on tuesday morning no it makes it too easy to identify you little pricks really um Now, apparently, what I have here says the Villain City Proud Boys are a splinter faction of Miami's longer-standing Vice City Proud Boys, which disavows the former group and calls it illegitimate. (laughs) That's right. Hey, Villain City Proud Boys and Vice City Proud Boys, you guys ought to form a circular firing squad and make, you know, decide who's the king of the hill. Oh, my God. Who else we got here? Oh, yeah, Lauren Witzke. Um, Lauren uh, is a far-right, crazy bitch conspiracy theorist who unsuccessfully, duh, ran for the U.S. Senate in Delaware. And she also live-streamed from a demonstration organized by an anti-Muslim activist named Laura Loomer. Oh, you remember her? Oh, my God. Now, during her live stream, during Lauren's live stream, she wondered out loud if, quote, federal agents are undercover at the courthouse protests. Let's count the FBI in this protest. She carried a sign um, as she was interviewed, a pro-Trump sign. And little Lauren later contemplated uh, if the man ho- uh, holding the sign while she was being interviewed, which had toy water guns attached, she wondered if he was really a secret federal agent. Water guns on it, huh? Oh, my goodness. Now, uh, Miss Lauren Witzke is an ally, you might say, maybe a bed partner of the white nationalist asshole Nick Fuentes. And she soon grew tired of covering this stupid-ass loomer protester and turned her attention to trolling the media. She said on her live stream, Is CNN here? Oh, shoot, I forgot. I was streaming. Oops. (laughs) Oh, my God. Um. Also, according to published reports, various factions of Trump fans scheduled their courthouse protests over the course of the day. Uh, Miss Lunatic, or Loomer's event, was slated to start at noon. 
and a convoy, a convoy of four buses organized by the Florida Republican Assembly arrived at 2 p.m. And toward the beginning of that rally, Laura Loomer claimed that Trump's team had called her on Tuesday morning to express their support for her event. Loomer yelled this, quote, President Trump, his staff called me this morning. President Trump is grateful for the rally. His staff personally called me. They did and said they were here with President Trump this morning, and he wants to thank me for coming out today. They are very happy that this rally is taking place. They're happy with me. President Trump is very grateful that we're out here today. It's like a recording. It just keeps going and going and going. And one of Trump's few remaining hangers-on, a guy named Stephen Chung, was asked by the Daily Beast about Loomer's claim. Trump is very happy I'm here. His people called me. And... Mr. Stephen Chung didn't even bother answering the Daily Beast's request. Yeah, I wonder why. Um, now, Laura Loomer uh, apparently had a good reason to talk up Trump's support for her efforts. He called me! Uh, because the Daily Beast reported Monday evening that Trump's own advisors uh, thought protests outside the Miami courthouse were a bad idea. Uh, One Trump advisor told the Daily Beast, I would hope it's not a protest regarding Laura Loomer's little shit circle jerk, whatever it was. Uh, And early, even before the rally, uh, Trump's aides tried to distance him and themselves from Loomer and the Roger Stone promoted event. Oh, Roger, that son of a bitch. He's been around for so long. Such an evil fuck. I mean, he really is. He was one of Dick Nixon's bully boys. I mean, Roger Stone is going to live forever. He's not really human. He is a perfect example of artificial intelligence placed inside somebody else's dead body years ago and and being kept alive with or kept animated with formaldehyde or something. But Roger Stone is the perennial pissant who tries to screw up everything that isn't fascist organized or oriented. Um, Let me see here. Oh, this the, the, the Trump advisor, the one that tried to get rid of Laura Loomer and her gang and wouldn't acknowledge Roger Stone. He added, uh, before attempting to make clear that the official Trump campaign wanted no part in any demonstrations, this Trump hanger on said, quote, anybody we've heard from at the campaign, it's been somebody who just wants to come and be supportive of the president <laughs> with a pig's head. Right, dude? <laughs> ah. But anyway, in in. In, in spite of all the worry from inside Trump's little tiny inner circle now, in the end, with nobody showing up to speak of, uh, Trump supporters had to find something. So they found a familiar boogeyman. Um, a guy named Jackson Lamire told the Daily Beast, quote, I think MAGA has to be beyond cautious and, and, and weary of feds creating another trap like January 6th. The feds created a trap. I, I, I mean, who, who, <laughs> who can think like this? Well, I, I mean, five and six and seven year olds think like this. But um, oh, so a lot of these MAGA supporters that showed up in Miami yesterday were wandering around, bumping into shit, trying to figure out who among them might be federal agents. <laughs> Are you? Where'd you get the pig's head? The Oh, and by the way, like I mentioned, this little group of um, morons was briefly asked to leave part of the, co- the courthouse grounds after law enforcement, you know, showed some concern about that unatten- unattended package. And the item turned out to be, once they opened the package, it turned out to be a television with writing on it, apparently put there by, you know, the MAGA jerk-offs. Um, That's according to Miami uh, New Times. And police removed the TV and then allowed demonstrators back onto the property. (laughs) Oh, my God, my God.
God. Now, one of the reasons the Proud Boys and the rest of these militia pricks don't show up anymore is because they're terrified. They really thought they could uh, stop the transition of power, and when they found out they couldn't, they all tucked their tails between their little their little legs and, and went home. And then when they started going to prison, well, when they started being arrested and put on trial and going to prison and shit, that's when a lot of them decided, I'm just guessing here, but I think it's a valid guess, they just decided, oh, well, maybe we better stop this. I mean, can, can, let's go back in the woods and pretend like we're important. Oh. Hi, True Seekers, Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.